the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you are lacking in one thing, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said amongst themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the world to come. 
the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's gospel has always made me sad. It made me sad the very first time I read it, when I was coming into the church. And it made me sad when I read it earlier today, as I was sitting down to put to, to pen to paper to write out the outline for my homily. You may say, which part made you sad? Was it the, the part that said it is easier for camel to get through the eye of a needle than for someone who is wealthy to enter the kingdom of God? No, because I'm not wealthy. What made me sad was the part which said, at that statement his face fell. And he went away sad, for he had many possessions. It's a very sad thing. Here's a man who was seeking God, he had his answer, and he went away sad. Why did it make me sad? Because I knew it could be me. The God one day could call me to do something that I would rather not do. Fortunately, I have not been called to radical poverty. I dodged that bullet. But still, I feel sad for the man. He was a virtuous man. How do we know he was virtuous? Well, one, th one reason, he, he wanted to know how to follow God into everlasting life. Lord, what must I do to be saved? And he recognized in Jesus someone who could give him the answer. And when Jesus asked him about the commandments in dealing with other people, he could honestly answer that he had obeyed them all, that he had not murdered, that he had not stolen, that he had not borne false witness, that he had not coveted. He was, was, as we would say today, a good man. He was someone you would like to have as your neighbor because you knew he wouldn't be stealing your stuff or killing you. Note, by the way, that Jesus didn't ask him whether he had said the sinner's prayer or whether he had accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. He asked him if he obeyed the commandments. It was about what you do, not just what you believe. Faith and good works together. Jesus called him to work on the other commandments. Most specifically, thou shalt, ha thou shalt love the Lord your God. Him alone shall you adore. Because it is evident from the, from the scripture that this man, in spite of his virtue, had another God. He had an idol, and that idol was his stuff. Jesus challenged him to get rid of, to sell his stuff, give it to the poor, and then follow him. You know, these, that is the idols that we, one of the idols that we have today. Most people don't worship Zeus or Hermes or Thor or Odin. Instead, they worship stuff, their 401k, or they worship pleasure, sex. Those are the idols of the present age. And they cannot be allowed to take God's place. And so the man went away sad. And Jesus used the occasion to teach his disciples something that blew their minds. 
how hard it is for one who has wealth to enter the kingdom of God. For the disciples, this would have been as if someone had said, the sun rises in the west every day. No, no, the sun rises in the east, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does. They considered wealth such a sign of God's favor that the idea of someone with wealth not going to heaven blew their mind. These days we call it the prosperity gospel. It is common in some fundamentalist Protestant circles. Name it and claim it. You know, if you're a really good Christian, God will bless you with wealth and prosperity and health and all of these things. How can you tell sinners? They're poor and they're sick. That's not what the scripture says, by the way. It's the same thing in Jesus' time. How can you tell who God's a lot, God likes? They're wealthy and they're powerful. And they have good health. Jesus told them something else and it turned their world upside down. If someone who is wealthy can't be saved, what about the rest of us? Then who can be saved? We do not save ourselves, do we? We do not earn our way to heaven. You know, good deeds are important because they show that we're following God, but it's not as if we're earning our way to heaven. It's not as if we're putting our good deeds in the wonderful vending machine for heaven. And when you get enough credits, you can press A1 and you go right to heaven. It's not how it works. God saves us. For man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You know what that means? It means that the poor and the sick and the forgotten, they can go to heaven. It also means that the wealthy and the prosperous and the health, healthy can go to heaven too. We don't earn salvation. It is given to us by God freely. But we have to work with him. I have always, in addition to this scripture making me a bit sad, I've always held out some hope, though. I've always hoped that what Jesus said to this man rattled around in his brain and in his heart. Maybe it was decades later. But I've always hoped that the man said Jesus was right. And he made God the center of his life. And that when he died because of that, because he had treasure in heaven, he went to heaven. My sons and daughters in Christ, take heart. Because as long as any of us is alive, it is still possible to be saved. It is still possible to hear the word of God and to do his will. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who hath spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in prayer for the needs of the church and the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Oscar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and Russia, the Middle East, and throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders will govern in accord with the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fallen away and apostate Catholics will return to Christ's church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to the religious life, diaconate, and priesthood. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and the safety of our military forces and first responders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Monsignor Michael Winterer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to respond to the Lord's invitation to give ourselves away for all who are poor and weak, especially the dying, the forgotten, and the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intention that we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, look with kindness upon these prayers, which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever.
pray, brother, in that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that, through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the Dean family. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who were dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being. And paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, he, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, the Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting a sure pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. If you re have been reading the bulletin, which you really ought to do, you would know that next Saturday we will be hosting the relics of the Apostle Jude Thaddeus. Uh, it will begin with Mass at 1 in the afternoon, and the veneration of the relics will continue until 9. What that means, partially, is that there will be no confessions and no uh, 5 o'clock vigil Mass next Saturday so that we can accommodate the relics. So, so now you know, plan accordingly. Also, uh, not this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend, we will be taking up a special second collection for hurricane relief to help aid those who have been impacted by Helene and Milton. Where do they get the names? I don't know. Uh, but in any, in any case, the money will go directly to Catholic charities in the affected areas so you can you will be certain that your money is getting to those who uh, need the help the most the lord be with you bow down for the blessing may the lord bless you and keep you May he make, let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most